Let's get into our next discussion now. One phenomenon that precedes every election year in Nigeria is carpet crossing or defections, depending on how you want to call it. Mm -hmm. And 2019 is proving it will be no different following the mass exodus of National Assembly members from the ruling All Progressive Congress last week, Tuesday. Yes, and 36 members of the House of Representatives and 14 senators dumped the APC for opposition parties mainly the People's Democratic Party, uh, Senate President Bukola Saraki and Kwara State Governor Abdul Fattah Ahmed joined the bandwagon yesterday. Uh, political watchers have expressed concern over the manner in which politicians jump ship just to achieve their ambitions. They say politicians and political parties lack ideology, hence the mergers and coalitions currently taking place. Now, those Section 68... G of the 1999 Constitution, as amended, validates defections hinged on the fractionalization of the political party on whose platform elected persons secure their seats. Some political stakeholders are calling for a revisit of the resolutions of the 2014 CONFAB, which says that Section 68G of the Constitution be further amended to indicate that any elected official who carpet crosses, mm -hmm. uh, regardless of the reasons, should automatically forfeit their seats. In fact, some people have recommended they should go back to the electorate to seek yeah. the new mandates before they come back if they have to continue in office. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll find out what our guest uh, thinks about this particular uh, situation. Uh, he's a National Publicity Secretary, People's Trust, a new mega party, Professor Anthony Killer. Uh, with us in the studio. Good He's morning. actually many things. Yes, he wears many caps. <laughs> uh, all right, and this is just one of the many caps that he wears. Good to, to see you Thank on you the show me. this morning. Good morning. Uh, let's begin with this um, debate now about uh, or, or the, the morality or otherwise of uh, decamping or jumping ship and retaining the, that position, you know, uh, that you... Uh, you know, that you were elected that on. You were elected on. Yeah, elected yes. On. Well, I think it, it depends on how you look at it. Um, look at it this way. People get married and divorced. If a, if, a, if a husband is beating a wife, if a husband is beating my daughter, mm. I would not let her stay in that house forever. So it depends on what is happening where you find yourself. Mm. It sounds commonsensical to say that if a party elects you, it is not moral for you to stay there forever. But you see, politics and democracy... It's not exactly common sense. Okay. It goes beyond that. It is process. The reasons why politicians go into politics is to A, get power. You see, all politicians, mm. from President Buhari today and other presidents before him yeah. and other presidents after him, to the lowest local ward chairman, what politicians have in common is the thirst for power. What divides them is what they do with that power. Now, any politician who feel marginalized in any organization will tend to move away from that organization because it is not allowing him to express himself. This goes beyond partisan understanding. This is understanding what we call almost politicals. This is understanding the political animal. Mm -hmm. So, and if we don't understand that as citizens, we're going to be fooled. Okay. So, politicians will move when they're not happy. Now. Is it right? The Constitution tries to say that people should be tied to their party. Personally, I object. And again, you see these politicians, they are ahead of us. The conversations we're having, mm -hmm. they have solved it. Because if you notice one thing in the history of carpet crossing, your colleague noticed rightly that towards the election, they always cross carpet. Yes. You know what they've done? They've resolved that issue of the Constitution. They don't cross carpet during the year. They cross carpet close to the election so that by that time, they automatically are going to the citizens to say, this is the new me, the you like me. Mm -hmm. So we shouldn't go to the Constitution. What we should go, I think, where we are now, is that we citizens should be very glad that people are cross carpeting. Why is that? Why? Very good. You see, because cross carpeting is a symbol it's CC, you call it, cross capitain. Mm. It's a symbol of another two Cs, and that is confrontation, competition, and chaos amongst the political class. Citizens should be happy when those things are happening because when the political class are calm and they're not confronting each other and they're not cross capitain and, they're not, and there's no chaos, mm. what we have is conspiracy against the citizens. Mm. 
when they are cross capitating when they are challenging each other, when they are confronting each other, key bono, they say in Latin, is who mm -hmm. gains? Mm -hmm. We, the citizens, gain because that time we become their bride. All of a sudden, they'll be saying what we like. Mm -hmm. The ones in opposition will be saying, I do more. The one in government will be doing a lot of things they could have done in the last Ideally, years. That, that's a beautiful way to mm -hmm. look at it. But let us, let us come down to the realities of the average voter in Nigeria. Yes. Is he sophisticated enough? Is he enlightened enough? Is he knowledgeable enough to know that I am the bride and I own the vote? I wield it the way I want. Mm. And if two suitors are coming, or suitors yes. are coming for oh. me, mm -hmm. What is the pedigree of this and what is the ped do they have that sophistication to, to reason between these two or three or four, whoever that is coming to them to decide Let us rightly? break it. Let us break it into three levels. Mm. You are starting from the ones who are not. Okay. Before I know your program and I know people who watch your program, I can assure you if you don't know that all the viewers of your program are the sophisticated ones who can do graduate. So your viewers are fine. They get it. We have no problem with mm. that. Your viewers will then influence the ones who are not so sophisticated. Okay. Mm -hmm. They will influence their family, they will influence their dependents, they will influence their neighbors, mosque members, church members to see the new truth. That's the second level. The third level is people like you and this confraternity of the press and the media will then not be fooled by political formula. They will look for facts and truth and real analysis and say, look, this is what is really going on. You guys decide. It is true that there is no ideology in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. That's asking for too much. I will even be fine <laughs> with ideas and programs. Really asking for too yes, much? Yes, this ideology thing. What it's should big we be asking nothing. for at this Let's point? Let's just ask for ideas. Let us say, okay. if you're elected, will you defend the dollar or not? Mm. If mm. you're elected, would you consider housing a priority? Mm. Would you agree that housing should be treated as important, as par, and maybe not put the ministries together? Do you believe that you're going to breed five million houses in this amount Yeah, but of do years. all of this all together not form an ideology? Um, it's slightly different, but we'll complain to it. It's slightly okay. different. You see, ideology is a total mindset of looking at the world. Mm. Mm. It is ideology. People are right. Mm -hmm. It is ideology that makes people struggle in some democracies, like the British-American democracy, to move from one camp to the other, because there is two worldview completely different. These countries, people are hungry. The worldview is hunger. The worldview is what is there for me. Yeah. And what people need legitimately is not handout. Legitimately, they need an environment where a graduate can get a job without being somebody's nephew. They need an environment where a professional can set up a business without having contacts in bank. Mm -hmm. That is legitimate. Illegitimately, they need to beg for money. They sell their votes. They go to rallies to be paid. They suck up to people. That is the situation we have. Which unfortunately happens to be the narrative right now. That is the so narrative So if nature. you are the bride as a voter, and yes. um, according to you, yes. it is beneficial for the voter, for the electorate, that all of this chaos is and competition on. is going on. Yes. At the end of the day, this seems to be just a one-off. That after you have cast that vote for that person that you believe uh, will deliver on their promise, at the end of the day, uh, you find yourself back where you started from. I wish all the viewers in Nigeria would learn your skepticism the way you said it now. And that is what's going to help us. This way you're reasoning is the way Nigerians should be reasoning. To say, okay, good, I'm the bride today. You're going to get my vote and go away and forget me. Mm -hmm. The next step is after you give your vote, we now have vigilance. You see, because our problem is a lot, we do not see the marginal gains we're getting in this democracy. Okay. For the first time in the history of Nigeria, and I say this selfishly because I'm writing a book on it. For the first time in the history of Nigeria, Nigerians have seen the attempt of a recall. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have been saying that for oh, close to two decades. Yeah. You see, what happens now is that people are confident. They know how to do recall. Uh -huh. They know it is now possible to recall a seven person. Whether I succeed or not. You see, when I was gloating over um, Queen Dino Malaya's recall. I call Dino Malaya. Queen? Yes, the drama okay, queen. Drama. That, that's what I call him all the time. <laughs> and when I was gloating over his recall, I, I tried to explain to his supporters that it's not that I hate him. I enjoy the possibility of citizen power that mm. they're able to do this. Now that we know how to do recall, trust me, post May 2019, Nigeria is not going to be the same again. It's not going to be take my vote and disappear. Mm. If people 
are going to become people like us will help them create chaos mm. will help them look of how to recall senators we're working on a paper how, how to recall governors as well mm. so this country is not going to be the same we're having or marginal how to gain. recall president or how to recall president mm. and how citizens can actually take their law <laughs> into parliament themselves mm. but but when we run a presidential system of yes. government where we have the executive president or executive uh, uh, governors the constitution doesn't uh, provide for a recall in yes. that context it only talks about either the point of voting for someone you vote him out or vote him in or at the point of impeachment where in, the in person the is impeached by uh, the by the legislature oh, the oh let's maybe. not gary get, get carried away okay you know a recall of a president is a huge thing it's not mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not, <laughs> it doesn't mean you walk in uh, 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 all right let, let's 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 go back to the a lot of people have called what we have now a nascent democracy young democracy and all of that what we are going through now where our politicians who some of them when it comes to experience some of yeah. them have been in politics and governance for the past 20 30 years yeah. so when it comes to experience yeah. they have known manage. it they have in fact some of them are even consultant to some african countries yeah. based on whatever you call it but we come back home and we are not able to put all of those together yes now is it a process that we must have to go through in building our democracy towards having an ideologically based uh, political parties and the rules of engagement and rule of law and putting all of the systems together. What we have now, what people may see it as chaotic, but is this a, is this a, a, a path for we must tow to uh, grow? I, I think it's a, it's a path we must tow. If, okay. if we've not been lucky with leadership mm. in Nigeria, you know, if we have been lucky with leadership, although it's a young democracy, mm. we could have done things faster. Things could have been catalyzed, as it were. Uh, because, you know, when people tell me, oh, this is Nigeria, I look at the person telling me, and I think the f handset, the phone you're holding, is more sophisticated than the phones my students mm -hmm. use abroad. Mm -hmm. Nigerian students at, at CIAPS, where, where I teach in Nigeria, they, the phones they have, they're more sophisticated than the phones students use in Cambridge. Absolutely. And, and the kind of things they do. So when we choose, we're advanced. I think leadership-wise, we've not been lucky, because we've had leaders who have played identity politics rather than functional politics yeah. mm. and rather than building politics we've not been lucky to have people who dedicate themselves to the building of institutions and nations our politics have been really my identity of religion identity of ethnicity, ethnicity and blind followership you see yet it wasn't always like that if i mean uh, students of history or nigerian history will tell you about the nigerian youth movement yes uh, it wasn't until uh, namdi azikiwe and uh, kinsoya Yes. Uh, Samuel Akinsoya moved away from that party yes. in thir 1937 or so, yes. that this whole culture of defection yes. started. Yes. Yet, NYM, the Nigerian Youth Movement, was actually an inclusive party that welcomed everyone, whatever your ethnic, ethnic you group know, uh, grouping was or your... Mm. You, it, you know, it, it is good and it's romantic where. to think about the past that way, but you see, mm. there's one element. Those, those movements, they were together fighting the British. When so there is an external enemy, enemy mm. everybody gets a common together. interest was there. Common, if yeah. you go, those people were in Russia lately, mm -hmm. Nigerians didn't ask which part of the country you were. Nigerians got together because they were in Russia against the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. Th that is the idea. What I think we do, we need to do with movements like People Trust and this new coalition of citizens coming out, is to refine the spirit of citizenship against the oppression, tyranny, and actually the fraud, conspiracy of the political class. Mm. People need to get inside to go and say that regardless of where this person comes from, regardless of what his party, this individual, is he good enough? Can he solve the problem? You see, we need to build citizens who can have the mentality of knowing that I want to be employed in the next governor of my state. Mm -hmm. I want to be employed in the next president. So if I want to employ the next president of Nigeria, I need to ask myself, what are the skills, what are the knowledge, what are the exposure mm -hmm. this person must have to be able to be the CEO of Nigeria? Well, that doesn't seem to be the case where you have political parties being the platform on which individuals emerge to yes. seek political office. I read somewhere not too long ago where somebody was actually recommending that we should discard the party system and vote individuals rather than 
parties. But mm. of course, the Supreme Court in the Amechi uh, case, case yes. ruled that it is the, po it, the political party that you that, vote that really for matters. and not the, the we, individual. We have built a democracy built on the supremacy of party mm -hmm. rather than individual. And unfortunately, I say, slowly, um, rather in a rather destructive way, INEC has validated that because we have not built the institute of independent candidates, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which I think is something more nearer to the spirit of Nigerians. You know, why to come out? Because the truth of the matter is that in 1993, when M. won the election, yes. it wasn't his party that won. It was the man that we mm. were looking at. You know, this capable, charismatic, generous man was what people were looking at. And we need to refine that spirit. At the moment, there are a lot of people who, if you look at them personally, mm. with their qualification, their background, and you strip them of their political party, you probably will not vote for them. Yeah. And I think those who own the parties mm -hmm. enjoy that situation because they give them a lot of power and they can hold people together into that party. Mm -hmm. We, the people, need to break that for them. We, need, we, the people, need to see that we can see beyond what they're presenting us yeah. and become more discerning. And All right. to if we come back to the issue of the, def the mass defection that we're having, right in fact, now. some politicians say there's still going to be ma mm -hmm. much more yes. defections going mm -hmm. forward into the 2019 election. Now, you said earlier that it was good. It was good for uh, Nigeria, uh, as it were. But if they, if they keep defecting like that, yes. who stays to build the party based on ID because when it comes to political parties they yeah. need to be ideologically based yeah. so that you have a program where everyone believes in it mm -hmm. you use that belief to drive patriotism you use patriotism to ensure that you get your development or your growth so how, how do we ensure that the how do we ensure that we have three possible options that mm -hmm. can emerge mm -hmm. option one is that the people who are cross capital at some point they get together and they start building things that will make them stick together forever. Mm. Because I tell you, this idea of zoning was one of the things I was invented. I'm against zoning. Mm -hmm. But I understand, and, and again, every time I get, I, I get a chance to pay tribute to the best theorist of toning, Anthony Akiola, he's a guy in Oxford. He's one of the people who's really sat down to do it. The, the idea of zoning is yeah. to find a way to solve the problem of hegemony of one part over the other. Mm. I think it's a pedestrian solution, but uh -huh. that's where we are. You see. And it's because they had problem of who should go now. So mm -hmm. if they keep cross capital, option one, I repeat, is that the same cross capitals who are all the politicians. Let me tell you something. All the politicians you see today, when you look at them, call them PC, potential cross capital, <laughs> wherever they are now. They can still go tomorrow. Mm -hmm. These same politicians can find the solutions by themselves. Once they keep cross capital, at some point they can get together and say, okay, this is what is going to hold us, and we won't go back away. The other thing that can happen is... People like you keep asking them, okay, so you've left party A. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do differently in party B? Mm. What are you bringing in party B? The third option that can happen is that a third force can emerge. We keep forgetting that thing. Okay. A third force that is truly a mega party made of, of like minds bound together by ideas and clear principle. I will even say, you see, I'm very easy to please. I don't even want a long-term ideology. Let's just do very clear things, 10 things every four years, and let that bind us together. Mm -hmm. And we agree what we want to do, who's going to do it, and how long it will take to do it. Do you think we'll that might just be what is playing out now? I mean, like, like they say, you, you know the sunshine through the rain. Yes. The same PDP people who went to the APC are now back to the PDP. Yes. Is it, has it come full circle where they now say, look, this is actually what we stand for. We don't really believe in whatever the APC stands for, and we think that now is another chance for us to, uh, you know, to, 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 to make that to, thing to happen. Make, yeah, to, to begin it, it, to it evolve is, that ideological, uh, you know, stance. You see, it is very possible. Personally, I'm a very selfish citizen. Mm. By default, I distrust politicians. By default, I always think there's something else to it. And I'm always thinking, what is the need for me? What is the need for me in the sense that as a taxpayer, as a working citizen, I'm always mm. thinking, what do you want to do for this country? So maybe that's the situation, because they, they all left. Um, it would be very interesting you know, to replay 
what they said when they were leaving the PDP, PDP four years ago. Exactly. <laughs> but it will be also very interesting to see what the people they left in PDP were saying then mm. and compare and what it they're to saying now. what is being said You today. know what, let me quote okay. what uh, Saraki the, actually said. He said it is evident that the PDP has learned more from its defeat than, than the APC, APC has learned from, from its, its victory. victory. <laughs> I read the statement. No <laughs> were craft statement. I actually enjoyed that. Yes. The road. You, you see, you'd be shocked that that is a statement that somebody who's um, living, and there's some depth in that, in that thing. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. And there, right. There's some yes. depth in that. And look, our politicians, we need to force them to be good. The goodness we admire in the countries we go to when we're sick and we go to, to spend our money when we're rich mm. and we dream of being, it is not created out of the goodness of personal politicians. They might drink more tea than us in England or eat more pasta <laughs> in Italy. Human beings are human beings. Mm. They're what they are because people are forcing them to be good. Because there's a judiciary that works, there's a press that works, there are citizens who don't care mm. who you are or where you come from. Yeah. They look at what you are doing and what you can't do. We need to force our politicians to be accountable. Okay. And we need to force them to be accountable to us. Okay. Nigeria has, uh, before we go, Nigeria has right now about uh, 68 political parties mm -hmm. and still counting. We had yeah. the INEC chairman here sometime. Mm -hmm. He said there are over 100 applications yeah. yeah. more. Mm -hmm. that, uh, so we could expect more political parties coming in. Yeah. You are a spokesman of uh, People's Trust, yes. one of the 68 for now. Yes. Nigerians feel that these political parties, what is one having that is so different from the other, that is so different from the other in 68 places that we may even have 100 places as the case may be? So for your party, for instance. People's trust. People's trust. Yes. What does your party have that is different from maybe ADC or different from maybe MBDG or something as the mm -hmm. case may be? Okay, ILA. Okay, ILA. <laughs> <laughs> No. You didn't expect that? <laughs> okay, you have one yeah. second mm -hmm. to, to say that. Yeah. I think it's a people-oriented party. Mm -hmm. the, the party representatives have been saying, it is a bottom-up approach. It is a group of people who think that the way things are going in this country is not good enough, and we need to bring people together from all different areas and see if we can agree on a few things that can move the country for the next four years. Mm -hmm. It is a citizen-centered, citizen-oriented group of people who believe that the people should be given the chance to decide their fate, regardless of how they worship and where they come from. Okay. Well, right. interesting. Uh, People's Trust is a party that uh, certainly may not be out there like all the other major ones, but it certainly, when it comes to the books, all parties are equal. And we look forward <laughs> to all Okay, of let's As go home. Thank uh, you yes. so much, Professor yeah. uh, Anthony. Anthony Killer, for coming on the program. Thank you for having Thank me. You so Thank, you so Thank you so much.